the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning I want to focus on this uh, letter of Paul to the Galatians, because it raises a question for me. Is the Apostle Paul being a hypocrite of the people of the church in Galatia? A quick summary of what Paul is writing them to them is this. Christ set you free from following the law that exposes you to sin, but don't sin. So when so do, do what God wants by following the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit that leads to godly love. Jesus calls the Pharisees hypocrites and says to the crowds, do as they say, but not as they do. Paul is telling the Galatians how to live their life. Is he following his own instructions? Or is he a hypocrite? Let us look at another letter of Paul, his letter to the Romans. To the Romans he writes, We know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold into slavery under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I, I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good that I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer that I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that what I want to do, when, you know, what I want to do good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law in my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells within me. Now, it sounds to me like Paul needs to get his act together before he starts preaching to the Galatians on how to live their life. However, we must remember that the majority of Paul's writings were letters to specific churches dealing with specific and unique circumstances. In Galatia, Paul's gospel message has suddenly been caught between two extremes. At one extreme, we have legalistic Jewish Christians. They've arrived in Galatia, and they're teaching that salvation is still through following the entire Mosaic law. And they argue Jesus was a faithful Jew and followed the law to perfection. So you must do the same. On the other extreme, the Gentiles from other pagan religions are converting to Christianity and joining the church but have not totally abandoned the hedonistic beliefs and practices of their former faith. They are preaching that the spirit and the flesh are two separate entities. They argue you can still be spiritual and still indulge in the flesh. What Paul understands is that we sometimes don't understand or dismiss is that the two spirits, that there are two spirits at work in the world. A spirit of evil and, a, and the Holy Spirit. The spirit of evil works on the human soul using these two extremes. First, Satan says, follow God's laws. I know this sounds far-fetched, but let me explain. When Satan says, follow God's law, he's convincing us that we can work our way into heaven. If we just always do good, that we'll get a ticket to paradise. Satan's not stupid. Satan knows that God's laws are perfect, but human beings are not perfect. It's the same evil spirit that said to people of old, if you build a tower high enough, you can reach to God. The reality is that building the Tower of Babel would never have gotten its builders to heaven. It might have led to oxygen deprivation if they had built it high enough, but it wouldn't lead them to God. 
focusing on perfectly following the law takes our mind away and our hearts away off of God. We die an eternal death in our works righteousness. Our, perf our perfect intentions uh, will work us straight into hell. And that is what Satan is counting on. Paul says, the, all, the law only proves we are imperfect. It is a yoke of slavery. The old German reformer Martin Luther gives us an example from his own day. After a conversion experience, Luther uh, dedicates his life to uh, the church, but he joins the monastery. And he strives to be the most perfect and faithful monk that he can be. His eyes were opened by the grace of God, and he became a critic of many monastic orders for his day. It was so bad for Luther in the beginning that uh, he would go to confession like three or four times a day, but even if he had a bad thought in his mind, he would go to confession, and he would wear his confessors out. And they would say, go do something else. Don't, don't bother us with all these petty little things that you think are sins. He, so he was critical, so when his eyes were finally opened, the scales from his eyes, and he saw what was around him, and he saw those uh, in the monasteries as cloistering themselves behind walls. They spent most of their day in repetitive prayers and praying masses for every saint in the year. All their work was done for the good of the order. In these conditions, Luther saw people who despised one another not people who were inspired to love their neighbor. Most importantly, they neglected charity of others outside their walls. They were the Pharisees of their day. At the second extreme, Satan says to the ungodly to, or, to, uh, that, or to either God worshipers, anything goes. Anything goes. In your efforts to evangelize someone new, new You've heard them say, eventually, or some of you will say, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. I don't need the church institution. But it's a perversion of God's love that leads to a religion of hedonism. This is how Satan worked on Adam and Eve. Satan said to Eve, the forbidden fruit is beautiful to look at and is pleasurable to eat. If you eat it, you will not die. The religion of hedonism says God created us to experience pleasure. We have the freedom to do anything that brings us pleasure, don't we? What Jesus said, I want you to live a life abundantly. This is not what he meant. It takes the commandment to love yourself to such a narcissistic extreme that it perverts and overrides the command to love your neighbor. Self-dignity, self-worth, and self-respect are dulled by this thinking. It's another way in which God's laws are distorted. But Paul warns the Galatians, do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. What the flesh desires is opposed to the Holy Spirit. Against these two spirits of evil stands the Holy Spirit. In the Nicene Creed, we proclaim, We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the God, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. God's laws are perfect and holy. Jesus said, Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. But Jesus also knew that we cannot fulfill the law of perfection. Unlike Satan, who tells the believer, Just keep trying harder, and you'll get your free ticket in you'll get a free ticket to hell. Jesus died on the cross for us to fulfill the law for us. And through his work of redemption, Jesus made the Holy Spirit available to anyone who is willing to listen to it and be guided by it, be guided by that Spirit. What Paul is saying to the Galatians is this. Christ Jesus set us free from trying to keep that perfect law. But Christ did not set us free to follow not any law at all. We're guided by the Spirit to produce in ourselves the fruits of the Spirit, which Diane so uh, 
name. These fruits are the embodiment in the core of the law. Just as Jesus said that loving God, loving your neighbor, and loving yourself, fulfill the law, and on them hang all the law and the prophets. Those fruits of the Spirit are the core of the law that we are commanded to love. To have God, to have that godly love of self, to have that godly love of neighbor, and in that way, we love God. This is what freedom is. This leads to eternal life. So my conclusion is the Apostle Paul is no hypocrite. Paul is just a human being seeking to live his life in faith and trust in Jesus Christ. But it was a daily struggle for him, and it's a daily struggle for us. We have good days in which we do good things, and we love our neighbor, and we pat ourselves on the back. And then there are days when we hit the sack at the end of the day, and we say, man, this was a bad day. But there's always the opportunity to ask for forgiveness. And God's mercy is new every day. Every day you wake up and you put your feet on the floor, you have the opportunity to follow Christ. I like that old joke, Lord, I haven't, I haven't done anything wrong today, I haven't sinned, but now I have to get out of bed. <laughs> The Apostle Paul saw the competing spirits in the world of his ancient day, just as Luther struggled with those in his own day. How do we see these same competing spirits battling for control of the world and for the human soul and for our souls? How are we inviting the Holy Spirit into our life to help us in our daily struggle to be faithful to Jesus Christ? Amen.